it's going to be much of the same thing as I did with Firebrand, an introductory kind of uh, overall summary of what Scrapper does, why we use Scrapper, and a little bit of how we go ahead with using Scrapper. So, Scrapper is the second of our two mainstay healers, the first being Firebrand, which I addressed uh, maybe last week or in a completely different video. Uh, this is the second of them. We need one of them in every single party, in every single squad we run. But this is, of course, the Scrapper. The Scrapper is a high utility support. It does a little bit of everything, but primarily it does two things really well, which is um, healing and cleanse. Its main utility, the people run it in squads, is for its amazing stealth capabilities from its bomb kit smoke and its uh, sneak gyro. Both of these two things are amazingly strong, and just in conjunction with the rest of its kit, it pretty much does everything Firebrand can't, and together, these two supports should be able to keep you alive through most uh, minor engagements. So, just to start off with, let's talk about the, uh, the build itself. We use a combination of, obviously, the Scrapper Tree, Alchemy, and Inventions. As you can see with the build, the Scrapper Tree is Gyroscopic Acceleration, Damage Dampener, and then Applied Force. The bottom, uh, sorry, the Alchemy Tree is Health Insurance, Comeback Cure, and Purity of Purpose. And Intervention is Overshield, Soothing Detonation, and Medical Dispersion Field. To quickly just give a general rundown of what each of these do, I'll be just going over it pretty easily. Uh, for Gyroscopic Acceleration, makes it uh, pretty much just improves your... It says wells, but if you don't know, uh, your gyros are wells. So any gyro you cast is basically a well that's sent kind of somewhat like a necro well, but it's centered around your feet. It travels with you, it maneuvers with you. Uh, these are the main way you mitigate damage, cleanse, and stealth. So obviously, uh, gyroscope acceleration buffs literally your main abilities. Damage dampener, pretty obvious. It uh, mitigates some of the damage and applies it over time so that because of how Scrapper's healing works, you can just passively heal through it. And Applied Force, again, pretty obvious. Quickness is good because it allows you to spam more of your healing skills. You can utilize other things like Adaptive Armor or Kinetic Stabilizers, but honestly, the 111 on uh, Medkit, which we'll address later with Quickness, pretty strong. Uh, on to Alchemy, Health Insurance. This is a trait you need to pay attention to because when you're in Medic, Med kit, it is the uh, best way to heal due to its 20% healing increase to others. Um, it also, you get healed for more in med kit. So if you're getting spiked down, try to be in med kit, might save you. If you need to heal people like in a pinch, be in med kit, it's going to do more. Uh, comeback cure, obviously, you remove a lot of conditions, giving everyone regeneration, pretty useful. And the main thing that makes Support Scrapper, Support Scrapper, Purity of Purpose. Purity of Purpose is a trait that whenever you remove a condition from an ally, instead of removing it, you convert it into a boon. Uh, you remove so many conditions during combat, the amount of boons you can generate is quite frankly absurd. If the enemy does not have enough strips to keep up with you, you can run over them quite easily. Uh, this is the thing that makes Scrapper what it is. If it didn't exist, Scrapper would probably have fallen along by the wayside. And the entirety of its potential revolves around how well you can cleanse through a bomb, because you could potentially mitigate the entire bomb and turn it all into boons, especially if it is a heavy condi damage-based comp. Uh, going up above, Overshield makes sense. Read it. Gives you protection. Pretty decent keeps you alive. Uh, soothing Detonation, again, there's a lot of combo blasts that can be utilized. Extra healing is good. And Medical Dispersion Field, this is what you'll probably 
be sneaking a lot of extra healing out of as you can read it. Any healing done to yourself is given, 50% of that is given to your allies. Again, all of this pretty much just means you're constantly healing, you're constantly cleansing. Uh, people around you shouldn't die if you're being a good scrapper. Now, we run entirely minstrels with the scrapper build. From armor to trinkets to hammer, everything minstrels. Uh, on the weapon, we run two hammers. Uh, that might sound weird, but the purpose is so that you have one hammer with a superior signal sigil of benevolence and one of transference, and the other hammer with a sigil of transference and a sigil of renewal. Once you have stacked your sigil of life, make sure your sigil of renewal is out, because as you transfer through kits, the sigil of renewal procs, which heals allies around you and you still get the benefits of a stacking sigil. Pretty easy, pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see with the build, talking about the things we run, we run obviously hammer and we run the following utilities, starting off with medkit, then bulwark and purge gyro, elixir gun, and finally sneak gyro. Any of these can be in the order you wish, that's just happened how I happen to have them set up my bar. And obviously, hammer gives you the hammer skills, but we'll address those later. We're going into medkit first. With medkit, if you switch into that now, you have the following skills. Med blaster, bandage blast, cleansing field, vital burst, and infusion bomb. Starting with med blaster, this is probably the easiest way for people to heal. When you spam it, it's 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 a hose pipe. It's just a hose pipe of healing. It's not quite as much healing as some of your other major skills, but it does some base healing. Um, it gets three pulses out during its little animation, and it'll keep the squad topped up when you don't have anything else going on. Super low cooldown. Be spamming it when you're in med kit. Secondly, uh, this is more of like a healing shotgun. If you press it, you'll see that uh, with a bandage blast, skill number two. You fling out a little uh, array of bandages. These bandages can hit the same target. So the closer you are, the more bandages hit a target. Meaning the more regen you potentially give them, and the more healing potentially that can be done. Um, it can be thrown into a group, uh, or you could just run up and bandage blast someone in the face for a big spike heal. Again, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's on a pretty low cooldown. Um, it can be spammed out to a certain extent. You'll probably have it up a lot. Just in between your 1-1-1-ing, one, one, uh, throw out a bandage blast. Next, on to one of our kind of reasonable cleansers. Uh, number three, cleansing field. This is a field that is put down. It lasts for three seconds, pulses a couple of times, and it will be removing one condition per target per pulse. It's also a water field. So any blast supply to it will be doing an, a, uh, a small AoE heal. On to number four, Vital Burst. Another kind of like point-blank AoE heal. It just heals around you. It's not a field like a Cleansing Field is. It doesn't pulse. It just heals everyone around you up to five targets. And lastly, Infusion Bomb. Not a heal, but it is the main blast from your med kit. It gives swiftness, it gives vigor, and it gives regen. When you throw it on the ground, it's got a pretty decent radius. Uh, it can be used to catch allies up who might not have swiftness, but its main use is as a blast finisher and it should be always used in conjunction with your cleansing field. So the moment you'd put down your three, if you have no other reason to use an infusion bomb, you'd throw your infusion bomb on your feet and blast that water field. So everyone just give that a quick crack now, just to make sure you're aware of the interactions. There are no other water fields in the med kit, so make sure you're always, if possible, utilizing your infusion bomb with your cleansing field to get that extra AoE healing if it is necessary.
There are times when you will want to hold your infusion bomb back, but again, we'll go into that later, and you'll probably get a general gist of when you want to be using your blast finishes um, as we go through the kit. Uh, talking about what the med kit gives you for your tool belt skill, your F1 through to F5, or whatever you might happen to have to your keybinds, it is bandage self. It's a pretty reasonably sized heal, and due to the nature of the way your traits work, how all healing done to yourself, 50% of it is applied to other people, it's also a considerable heal to everyone around you. So if you need a big spike heal, consider pressing uh, well, your F1, or again, whichever key needs to be bound. It's good, it keeps people alive, uh, especially if you're getting spiked by a cannon or some nonsense like that. All right, moving on, let's drop out of medkit and let's talk about Bulwark Gyro. Bulwark Gyro is one of your gyros. It, when pressed, it gives you a uh, couple of pulses of barrier, uh, but its main purpose is that it redirects, I believe it is 33% of incoming damage to yourself. Obviously, you might think this sounds like a terrible idea, but with the amount of barrier it gives you, plus the ambient healing you get, um, you can easily survive through it. You should not die while Bulwark Gyro is up unless you've got like 50 people bombing on you, at which point the entire squad's dead. But Bulwark Gyro redirects damage, makes your allies tankier. Um, but the main reason why we run Bulwark Gyro over any other gyro is for its tool belt skill. Defense field. Which in this case would be on my F2. I'm not sure what it's bound for you. Defense field projects, as you can see, a little bubble over yourself. What this bubble does is block incoming missiles. It lasts for five seconds, but it also gives three stacks of stability. On, uh, or uh, I believe it's like eight seconds or so. I can't quite remember what it is in World vs. World off the top of my head, but it gives that to up to five targets. So if your Guardian ever has a lapse in stability and you realize that you need stability in a hurry, say if you see a Dragon Banner, uh, Dragon Banner 3, I believe it is, the little projectile, the knockback coming towards you, Defense Field's your go-to. Either you'll block it as a projectile, or you'll get stab up just in time to stop everyone from being knocked back. So again, Tool Belt, Defensive skill, defense field, uh, used for stability and blocking projectiles if you've got pew-pew ranges. Um, the Bulwark Gyro itself, utilized when you're approaching an enemy Zerg and they're about to bomb on you. If you want to try and mitigate some of that damage, get it over to yourself, because you do have the tools to absorb some of that incoming damage. The next skill we're going to talk about, Purge Gyro, the second of the spamble gyro skills that you'll probably be mashing a great deal. Purge Gyro is the main reason, well, the second main reason why Scrapper is so strong, especially in, uh, in a support role. Purge Gyro is, again, it's a gyro. It has five seconds of five pulses. Each time it pulses, up to five targets have one condition removed. And you know what happens when we remove conditions. They get turned into boons. This gyro, when timed correctly, against enemy incoming enemy bombs or strips can completely mitigate any damage it will cause. It just automatically runs. It doesn't matter if they CC you. It doesn't matter if you're in a bubble. It will just continue to do its job for five seconds. Bear in mind that, again, because we've traded it, both of these gyros give super speed at the end. So not only will it basically mitigate the effects of incoming strips, but if there is any cripple you haven't cleared, that little extra bit of super speed, super speed isn't a strippable boon, it will still allow your allies to get out of dodge. So both of these gyros should be popped in the early stages of the fight to mitigate incoming damage. Obviously, Bulwark for physical, Purge Gyro for conditions. Um, to talk about its tool belt skill, chemical field, Bit of a bit of an oddball. It puts down a poison field. Um, obviously, you might be thinking to yourself, "Well, that's not going to help. We don't have any condition damage." What this is for is for the debuff that poison itself gives, not its damage. Poison cuts healing, incoming healing, onto a target that is poisoned by thirty-three percent. Um, 
what obviously this means is if there are down players or players that are going down, chuck a poison field on them as we push through, and it should mitigate any attempts to uh, heal them up or revive them. Usually this would be done to like mitigate uh, things like uh, merciful intervention, as that's out of the meta. It's much better to just dump it as the enemy tries to push through us, as it will provide a little bit of extra condition cover for our scourges with their breaches, and also cut healing from the uh, enemy as they try to push through us if they can't cleanse it off themselves. Obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, wouldn't recommend blasting a poison field, though. It's not going to be very useful for you. However, the two bulwarks do have light fields that are worth blasting. You have Bulwark Gyro with its lightning field. So as this circle comes up, you have a lightning field that could be blasted. Uh, specifically in conjunction with the trait Speed of Synergy. Using a Leap Finisher grants you super speed. Using a Blast Finisher applies super speed around you. So by blasting Bulwark Gyro at your feet, uh, you can give people additional super speed. Uh, in the case of Purge Gyro, it's a Light Finisher. I mean a Light Field, which means when you blast it, it's an area cleanse condition. So you can get additional cleanses out of your Purge Gyro if you either blast it or Spin Finisher it. Whatever you happen to have up at the time. Moving on to Elixir Gun. Elixir Gun is another kind of a bit of a weird thing that we utilize. Um, it's skill one and skill two aren't particularly useful. In most fights, they exist. They do a little bit of damage. Um, skill two in particular, uh, it really relies on where it feels like bouncing to do anything of use. But we use, mostly utilize it for its 3, 4, and 5. Oh, and its uh, tool belt skill, but I'll cover that after. So 1 is just an auto attack. It does, it does bleeding, it does weakness, it does damage. It just doesn't do much in general. Uh, 2 is Glob Shot. It fires a projectile that bounces around willy-nilly, either crippling enemies or giving allies swiftness. Neither of them do much damage. You won't get any kills with this. Don't bother using it. Uh, the main thing you'll probably be seeing to use this with is uh, skill 3. Skill 3 looks a little bit like a green flamethrower. Fires out in front of you, occasionally fires in really weird directions, especially if the animation's wigging out. Uh, its main purpose is to, well, as you can read on the uh, tooltip, it removes five conditions. It also poisons the enemy, and it also stacks vulnerability on the enemy so that our incoming bomb could be more effective. It's at its best use when fired when we're clashing with the enemy to clear conditions off of allies, whilst also stacking vulnerability and poisoning on any enemy it hits. So if we're looking to clash and we have no purge gyro up, this is probably the second skill you're going to want to, wanting to be spamming. It does have a good bit of range. It's up to 600. So you can fumigate allies that are trapped behind, maybe with Cripple or something, just to get them back into the uh, the pack. I'm going to skip over four because four requires a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, further conversation, and just go straight to five. Super elixir, another heal. You shoot it on the ground. It does a small pulsing heal and an impact heal. It removes conditions, and it's a light finisher, so you can blast it for additional uh, additional AoE Condi clears. In conjunction with its other abilities, this is a very worthwhile skill to spam and use. And it's got a good range as well, so you can throw it onto allies that are caught out and need a little bit of uh, extra attention. Moving back to the skill I skipped over, Acid Bomb. If you'd like to press it without pressing anything else, Acid Bomb is an ability that seems completely useless as it sends you flying into Narnia. Obviously, this is not ideal. It, can, it might give you an escape, but usually it won't. The main reason we use it is because of its blast finisher potential. It is a combo finisher blast. Furthermore, you can cancel this backwards animation by stowing your kit or swapping weapons. So if you 
utilize this skill and immediately, as your feet leave the ground, attempt to stow the weapon or whatever you have bound, stow weapon, change weapon. Either way, you've just got to drop the kit. It will cancel the backwards momentum and just blast you on the spot. In conjunction with Super Elixir, that means you can do a combo of five and four very quickly and use your weapon uh, animation cancel to get an additional an additional combo uh, combo area condition clear out of it. This is also useful to know for conjunction with other abilities, as we'll go into very shortly. Um, talking about its tooltip skill, healing mist, regen to five targets, but it is your go-to stun break. When you need to break stun, and you probably will eventually need to do it in a hurry, healing mist. It'll get you out of it. Doesn't give you stab. You'll probably you might need to use your defense field in conjunction with it, but uh, gives everyone healing uh, a little bit of regen around you and breaks stun for yourself. Now talking about the other main skill, uh, the sneak gyro. This little bad boy here. It is a gyro, so it benefits off of the super speed when it terminates. It is a combo field specifically of smoke, which is very important. And it, when pressed, begins to give you stacking, uh, stacking invisibility. In conjunction with other blast finishes, which you have two main ones on in your kit at this time, and the rest of your party, you can stack a reasonable amount of stealth very easily. There's no real complexity to it. You just wait for the call for stealth, and then everyone starts blasting. The more blasts you can get out, the more stealth you can get. Yes, if you're using it in PvE, it is more stealth. Um, I believe it is limited to 6 seconds in total without blasts in World vs. World. I believe that's correct. Um, it's tool belt skill, however, is called Function Gyro. Uh, what this happens is it's a little gyro you can throw on the ground. It makes a lightning field that can be blasted if you need super speed. Uh, it gives super speed to allies you throw it onto, which means that if allies are trapped in the back by cripple, you can throw it onto them and they'll probably be able to rejoin the stack. Uh, it also has, as you read, the summon gyro can finish foes and revive allies, which means if you have an ally that goes down, who would like to volunteer? Okay. Acorn, please move to the side. Sal, would you kindly kill Acorn for us? Get him get him into down state. When he is down, everybody please press function gyro on him. The little gyro goes away the moment he has been revived, but it does revive him. It's not as ideal as maybe hand resing, as the gyro has, I believe, roughly, I think it's 12k health with no armor. It can die very easily. But furthermore, if we'd all like to target Barry now, Barry, could you please come back here? Friends, please kill Barry. And then when he's on the ground, I would like you to finish him with function gyro. Please stop trying to live. Oh, the joys of watching support classes try to kill something. Now, please finish him with Function Gyro. You can see they channel their little stomp and spike. You can target up to three enemies or three allies with this ability. It's a small, it's a small radius, so you can't always get the uh, maximum amount of uh, value out of it. But it does go up and over walls. So if you down an enemy on top of a wall, you might be able to fling it up there and just touch him with the tip of the AoE, and it will attempt to spike them. Yes, the more people you revive or stomp as well, increases the cooldown. Overall, though, most uh, utility you're going to get out of it is as a uh, long-range application of super speed if people get picked from the group and they need to be getting back in. As it doesn't really have its own stab, it doesn't really survive that long, um, 
it can be knocked away from people if they've got their brains turned on, and they usually do. Now, that's pretty much the rundown of what it does. Every button in the kit is pretty self-explanatory if you read the, the uh, tooltips. Um, it's not a complicated class, regardless of what people tell you. Uh, the complicated part about this class mostly comes from the decision-making of knowing when to press each button. It does, you can't spam stuff out, necessarily. You need to hold things back and use them at the right time. Furthermore, you need to know what your combo finishes do. You have two main sets of combo finishes, Whirl finishes and Blast finishes. You need to understand that sometimes it's you need Blast finishes, sometimes you need World finishes. You need to know when it's worth holding back your finishes for a little bit as well. And this is why, when it comes time for Sneak Gyro use, the Scrapper is responsible for two of the blasts of the, a, uh, a stealth rotation. Specifically, the two blasts you must be using and know how to use very well are Infusion Bomb from your medkit and Elixir Gun Acid Bomb. Specifically, you need to be able to blast whilst animation cancelling and not going into Narnia. Because while you are blasting stealth, if you allow the animation to carry out, it will take you and your stealth gyro away from the squad, guaranteeing that your, your, uh, your party has the least stealth and could reveal the entire squad. So, if you don't like to stack with me very quickly, I can see some of you are a little bit excited and already doing the stealth rotations. The way you can do it in two ways. I prefer to do it the safest way, which is the medkit blast first with its with its infusion bomb, and then switch over to your acid bomb for the blast. So imagine I'm the commander and I'm calling for stealth. You would get into your medkit and be ready for stealth until you hear the usual stealth and blast. We'll be trying that. So remember. Infusion bomb, switch to elixir gun, acid bomb, animation cancel. And you're done. You're there. So, stealth in three, two, one. Deploy Sneak Gyro. Throw your Infusion Bomb. Switch to your Elixir Gun. And then animation cancel the Acid Bomb Blast. If everything goes to plan, should have roughly 10 to 12 seconds, depending on how efficient you are doing it. This, of course, re relies on the Guardian to blast and the Revenant to blast. Hopefully they do it. Sometimes they don't have it. Obviously, this is the main way we blast stealth in combat. I, from, you'll mostly hear me refer to it as the combat blast. There is another method of blasting stealth, which I will be covering now, if everyone would like to go back to where they were in that nice, neat little line. This requires a little bit of finagling, and it's kind of a bit of a pain in the ass if you are not uh, familiar with how to do it. Usually what uh, we do is we will swap out our Bulwark Gyro for Bomb Kit. Now there is one reason why we do this. For its tool belt skill, Big Old Bomb, which is a blast finisher. It's got a long fuse time. And if you go into Bomb Kit properly, it has a Smoke Bomb, which is a Smoke Field. Of course, if we blast a Smoke Field, we get Stealth. So what generally happens is we'll refer to this as like a extended Stealth or bomb kit stealth or smoke stealth or something of that nature. Just anything that isn't just a straight stealth call. So if you'd like to get into your bomb kits, just swap out your uh, swap out your bulwark gyro for bomb kit. You, the way you do this is by setting your big old bomb. And this is very important. You must cast your big old bomb first. It is a three second fuse time. It takes a long time for it to be deployed. So let's just familiar ourselves, familiarize ourselves with this. We're going to cast Big Old Bomb and then Smoke Bomb. So Big Old Bomb and then Smoke Bomb quickly after. You will see that roughly one second after the Smoke Bomb pops, the Big Old Bomb goes off. This is important because Big Old Bomb can potentially take so long, depending on how much everyone's wriggling around, uh, that if you cast the Smoke Bomb first, Big old bomb might go off too late. So the blast rotation for this is you place your smoke bomb, 
well, sorry, you cast, you place your big old bomb, you then place your smoke bomb, and then you go into med kit from your bomb kit, and you throw down an infusion bomb. From there, you switch off of bomb kit back to back to your bulwark gyro. Or you could do it sooner if you wish, depending on how hard you wish to piano your skills. So, let's try this together, shall we? Let's try the big extended stealth blast with just the first couple of steps. So we're going to go smoke, uh, we're going to go big old bomb, smoke bomb, into med kit, into infusion bomb. So let's try that now. So start off with big old bomb in your own time. Big old bomb, smoke bomb, med kit, infusion bomb. All right, and you should have noticed there's still a little bit of time left for you get to get an additional blast in. This additional blast, of course, is Elixir Gun. So, once your cooldowns are reset, make sure your uh, Infusion Bomb is off cooldown before we do this. You will be going Big Old Bomb, Smoke Bomb, Med Kit, uh, Med Kit Infusion Bomb, and then Elixir Gun, Acid Bomb, Weapon Stow Animation Cancel, and then you cast your Snake Gyro. So, if we're all ready, Get back into your bomb kit, and let's begin. Start with your big old bomb, smoke bomb, med kit blast, elixir gun blast, sneak gyro. In conjunction with other blasts, you can achieve 20, 25 seconds worth of stealth. Obviously, this is super powerful, as you can stealth well beyond the range of what most groups would expect you to be able to do. But bear in mind, if you get into combat, when this extended blast is happening, with your bomb kit out, you will not be able to get into, back into Bulwark Gyro. So, for this reason alone, this is the main reason why we utilize switching out the Bulwark Gyro, because it is the only thing you can do without if you switched out your cleanse gyro or your med kit uh i mean not your med kit your uh elixir gun for whatever insane reason uh and somebody got you into combat you're probably doomed bulwark gyro you can make do but keep it in mind you need to be switching back to bulwark gyro as soon as possible like the moment your sneak gyro goes out you need to be switching out of that uh switching out of that uh bomb kit back into your bulwark what I've seen people do is they will have bomb kit up and you see that little like triangle at the very top. What they will do is they will have that open and they will be like hovering over bulwark gyro. So they basically press their F2 and their F4 and then they've switched back like instantly. Find a way that works for you. Um, as this stealth blast is too powerful for us not to be very proficient with it. Now, I have kind of glossed over hammer skills. Uh, however, they're pretty self-explanatory. The main thing you'll probably be utilizing in hammer is hammer five. Hammer five is what you want to be doubling up on when you hear for a, uh, a commander, like when you hear the chrono commander calling for a pull. You Identify the target, you wait until somebody is pulled, you hammer five on that target. It creates a small field, everything inside that field is stunned for one second. Furthermore, uh, your hammer four is a shock shield. When you hit enemy targets with it, it gives you a bit of barrier. Uh, it's also a forward facing block, so if you're getting peel peeled face towards ranger, cast shock shield, it could save your life. Uh, rocket Charge, uh, your skill three. Um, it's three leap finishes in a row, and it takes you towards your enemy. I would hesitate utilizing this um, while you're in the stack, especially while you're pushing, as it could invariably take you away and take you on an adventure. Uh, you can cancel this, however, with the weapon stow trick. So bear in mind, if you have trouble cancelling it, just get into your med kit, swap back out, stow it, it'll save you. 
Uh, last, well, last but not least, Electro Whirl. Uh, it's a Whirl finisher. It reflects missiles, so again, if you're getting peel peeled, maybe send some of that peel peel back into their face. Specifically, it's a Whirl, so if you have other things like light fields down from, say, your gyros, you can Whirl finisher for cleansing bolts, which heal allies. I mean, not heal allies, cleanse allies. Uh, if it was in a water field, it'd heal allies. And it's auto attack. Um, I mean, it's going to give you some might, maybe, if you hit anyone with it. Don't expect to be doing damage with the hammer. Just utilize it for uh, its skills rather than its potential damage. As you are a minstrel's class, you aren't going to be doing any damage anyway. As you probably saw when all five of you were desperately trying to kill Barry. Overall, in review, Scrapper. It is a very strong class. Uh, it is the second of the classes we always use in our support lineup. In conjunction with Firebrand, they create a team uh, that kind of covers each other's weaknesses. Firebrand gives stab and uh, a good bit of just general survivability through its resistance and uh, protection in Aegis. Scrapper exists for the additional healing that uh, Firebrand lost in the recent nerfs, and to keep conditions under control. Its toolkit pretty much also means that in-combat stealth blasts are very efficient and effective, and if the squad is good with it, they can stealth blast on the move very easily, as your fields will follow the scrapper, so if the squad stays tight, you don't even need to stack too long to blast stealth, as you can do it on the move. If you want to get good at scrapper, and you want to get very good at Scrapper and top the charts, the main things to focus on is utilizing your Whirl and Blast finishes in your fields and understanding how your skills work in conjunction with each other. Again, Scrapper is an easy class until you start trying to combine things with each other to take yourself to that next level. Anyway, thank you for being so patient and listening. I can see everyone's getting a little bit impatient, so uh, well, we'll just call it there.